Good morning and welcome to our worship. We stand as we sing our opening hymn. On this St. Bartholomew feast day, we join our voices with all the saints as we return our thanks to God. Uh, we will omit verse 3 and 5. We omit verses 3 and 5. For all the saints who from their labours rest. in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please do be seated. What a great joy it is to see each of you this morning gathered in this place in bright array, as it were, with all the saints whom we rejoice with today, especially our patron saint, of course, Saint Bartholomew, no less. His Saint Day was yesterday, but obviously we transferred his day 
to today so that we can all be together and reflect on his life, his ministry, and his legacy. So welcome, thank you for being with us on this very special occasion. If you have traveled from distances afar, first time with us, or maybe not, wherever you have come from, thank you for being here. We pray that you may know a real sense of God's presence as you join with us. And so as we continue into God's presence with our worship and our praise. We are reminded with the saints that they were faithful unto death, and now they dwell in God's heavenly kingdom forever. And so as we celebrate their joy, let us bring to the Lord our sins and our weaknesses, and let us now ask for God's mercy. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. And now, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to life everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand as we sing our Gloria, which you'll find on our Gloria sheets. SG3 is our Gloria this morning. God on high, your glory we proclaim. discerned that we haven't got a live organist 
this morning. And so on this, this Sunday in which we bring to mind the ministry and the legacy and the example of St. Bartholomew, let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who gave to your apostle Bartholomew grace truly to believe and preach your word, grant that your church may love that word that he believed and may faithfully preach and receive the same through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please, you now be seated for our readings. Our first reading is taken from Isaiah 43, verses 8 to 13. Bring forth the people who are blind yet have eyes, who are deaf yet have ears. Let all the nations gather together and let the peoples assemble, who among them declared this and foretold to us the former things. Let them bring their witnesses to justify them and let them hear and say it is true. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and beside me there is no saviour. I declared and saved and proclaimed when there was no strange God among you, and you are my witnesses, says the Lord. I am God, and also henceforth I am he. There is no one who can deliver from my hand. I work, and who can hinder it? Our second reading is taken from Corinthians 4, verses 9 to 15. I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, as though sentenced to death because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and to mortals. We are fools for the sake of Christ, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. To the present hour, we are hungry and thirsty. We are poorly clothed, beaten and homeless. And we grow weary from the work of our own hands When reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we speak kindly. We have become like the rubbish of the world, the dregs of all things to this very day. I'm not writing this to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you might have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. Indeed, in Jesus Christ, I became your father, through the gospel. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. So we stand as we sing our hymn at the gradual, which as the apostle exhorts us and reminds us, we have a gospel to proclaim good news for all in all the earth.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. A dispute arose among the twelve as to which of them should be regarded as the greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, the leader like the one who serves. Who is greater, the one who is at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? I am among you as one who has served. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may the words that I speak and those that we hear be from Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please do be seated. Today in the life of the church, as we have said, we celebrate the sainted, the venerable, the much revered, much loved Saint Bartholomew. After all, it is he who gives us the name and the patronage of the place that we love. But what do we know about Saint Bartholomew? Well, we know that his name has gone far and wide. We know that establishments and hospitals around the world are named after him. But what do we know about him? We see his legacy. We remember his ministry. But what do we know about him? Well, here's the thing. We know very little about Saint Bartholomew. And what we do know about him is from tracts and scattered remnants of historical documents. We believe that he was, of course, Nathaniel, that great character from Jesus' life and ministry that we meet in the New Testament. We believe that he went on to preach the gospel, and we've talked a bit about what that means as we share in the ministry of St. Bartholomew, we too are called to demonstrate the gospel that he lived and he preached. Parts of Asia Minor continue to bear his influence. And we believe, as our immortal effigy attests, we believe that for his singular honor of preaching the gospel and being named amongst God's chosen preachers, he bore the ultimate price and became a martyr. Not only becoming a martyr for the faith, but a martyr in perhaps the most painful and brutal way. Uh, tr tradition says that he was, of course, flayed alive, having had his skin peeled away from his body. And if you would like, at the end of it, it's quite gruesome, isn't it, really, this story? If you would like to take a closer look, and no one would blame me if you didn't, if you'd like to take a closer look, the effigy of St. Bart's is there in slate and alabaster for you to see. And because of that singular honor of being flayed alive and ultimately paying the price, St. Bart's, of course, became the patron saint not only of churches, around the world, hospitals and the like, but also of tanners, those who work and, and earn their trade in the commodity of skin. How quite ironic. But other than that, we are not quite sure exactly what St. Bart was or did. And I think perhaps that's the secret. That's the lasting legacy of St. Bartholomew. Because all of today's readings 
point us in the direction of St. Bartholomew's humility. You could, of course, say, well, he achieved nothing remarkable, nothing noteworthy, nothing worth noting down, nothing worth celebrating, which is why there is nothing much recorded about him. Or, of course, we can conclude that St. Bartholomew was amongst the humble of God's people. And humility, of course, is a trait that God calls us to as we follow in our Lord's footsteps. Perhaps that's the real lasting legacy that we call to mind today when we think of our patron saint. Not his greatness, not his oratory, not his influence, but his humility. I'm sure as we look around the world stage today, you will wonder where humility has gone. We see angry, red faces fit to burst with rage and anger. We see orange faces on the world's stage claiming their supremacy, their greatness, their magnificence. We see leaders on the world stage around the world treating each other with hostility and hatred, vengeance and anger. Where can we find humility? St. Paul, in that second reading that John read for us, written to a church just like this 2,000 years ago, towards the middle half of the first century. And we find that Paul is having to write to this church for one reason. Well, he wrote to them about lots of reasons. But in his exhortation, he encourages them to remain humble. And the way that he does it is quite subtle because he doesn't preach at them. He doesn't demand of them as a spiritual leader. But he says, I have come amongst you as an apostle chosen by God, but the least. And as a leader, akin to the rubbish dump, of no consequence, of no importance, save that we are claimed by God and his grace. And so what Paul does in a very self-effacing way is says, look at me. Follow my example as I follow our Lord's example. And when we think of humility, perhaps we think of the greatest example of humility. We think of our Lord. And we can think of lots of characters throughout history who have exhibited an humility. And when you see humility, you will know humility. It's not a false humility. It's not a humility that is false modesty. But when you see humility in God's people and in God's leaders, you will know humility. It's an humility. Humility is the ability to think of others before we think of ourselves. And more than that, think of others better than we think of ourselves. That's a hard task. When we think of humility, we think of the Gospels, and Jesus in our Gospels today comes amongst the disciples who, like Paul's congregation some 50 years after, were quarreling amongst themselves. There's nothing more unseemly than the people of God quarreling. Quarreling about anything, but certainly quarreling about who is the greatest. Can you imagine anything that has more of a disconnect 
than a Christian quarreling with another Christian about who's the greatest. If we have a quarrel, let's quarrel about who's the lowliest, who's the most humble. And Jesus comes into the midst of this unseemly quarrel between the disciples. And he says, look around you. Look at the superpowers. And we could say the same today. Look at the leaders on our world stage. It should not be amongst you. I have come amongst you as one who serves. Even though Christ could claim the highest and loftiest place, even though he could claim the head of the table and be waited on, he comes amongst them and serves. Perhaps today, as we celebrate St. Bart's, for lots of, lots of reasons, we celebrate him most for his silence and for his humility and for the way that he points to Jesus, which, of course, is another lesson about humility. Those who are arrogant and selfish and self-absorbed can only talk about themselves. They can only point to me. True humility will be concerned for others. It is said that when you speak to a humble person, they will know more about you than you will know about them. And so we look to Jesus today as we think on humility. The curtain is slowly, inexorably drawing to a close on our ministry here with you. And as I inevitably close out these final weeks of public ministry as your rector, my encouragement to you is keep the unity and keep the faith. You have been a remarkable presence in this community. I'm looking out on faces whom I have grown to love and respect. Thank you for the way that you have taught us. Thank you for the way that you have walked with us, for all your fellowship. And I pray that you will keep together, keep looking out for each other in the way that you have. Someone said that we are all part of someone's memories. Some good. We're all part, too, of people's regrets. Be assured, I have not regretted one single moment. You will come with us in our memories. In the lessons that we have learned amongst you, we will take with us. So thank you for being Teachers, thank you for the way that you have always received us and welcomed us. You'd think this was my last service. Remind me to tell you about the story about the seagull. I will be with you one more time. But on that occasion, I may not get through it. So I'm saying it now while I get the chance. We are all someone's memories and we all travel with each other on this way. We are all fellow companions journeying towards the end. Thank you for this journey. Can I invite you to stand as we share together the faith? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, light from light, true God from true God. Through him, for us. he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Do we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son? With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Do we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come? Amen. Please you now be seated or kneel for our time of prayers. Father, in every age you raise up holy men and women that reflect the light of Christ and who teach us the way of holiness. Thank you for those who have been our teachers in the school of Christ. Will you give understanding to all those who study the faith, the faith that the church has handed on, and clarity to all those who communicate the gospel in a changing world? Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we thank you for those who have been shepherds of your people, who have uh, had a pastoral heart, deacons, priests, and bishops, for our church wardens and our worship leaders, for our PCCs, and for all those who work tirelessly and selflessly for mission and ministry in your church. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those who have been Christian rulers in our world, for those who carried the good news to lands where it had not been before. Will you give wisdom to all who have power and influence among the nations? And will you establish almighty God's sovereignty among people of every race? Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those whom you have called to live in community. Establish mutual love among those that you draw into fellowship in your service. And will you bless with your presence all the communities to which we relate. We thank you for all those who worship here in this community. We thank you for our Methodist and our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those who have lived out their vocation in family life. Will you give your grace to all those who nurture children, as well as those who care for the aged, and enfold in your love all those whom you have called sons and daughters? Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we thank you for those who have brought wholeness through the medicine of the gospel. Give skills to all those who minister healing and reconciliation in your name. Comfort all those who cry out to you from any sort of distress. In our prayers today, we remember ongoing conflicts near and far. We remember the intolerance that drives people to rage and riot. We remember communities in our own country 
divided and torn apart by race, creed and culture, and the color of our skins. We remember the continuing devastation and destruction in the Middle East. And we pray that those escalating tensions may be calmed and eased by words of reconciliation and understanding. We pray for all the leaders of the world who occupy offices of power and influence. that they may exhibit servanthood and humility. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And today in your church, here in this community, we thank you for all those noble martyrs, those whose lifeblood was shed in the mission and ministry of the church and for the witness of their Lord. Will you keep under your protection all those who are persecuted for their faith and for their testimony? And as we remember the life and lasting legacy of Saint Bartholomew, as well as all those who gave their life for the faith. We remember those too who have passed through death, continuing to trust in your promises. As we call them to mind, we celebrate their memory and we rejoice in their friendship. And we pray that you may keep us all in one communion and in one fellowship. Hasten then, Lord, the day when people will come from east and west, from north and south, to sit at that table in your kingdom, and we shall see your Son in all his glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We've been reflecting upon the things that St. Bartholomew would have believed and those things which he most surely preached. And the one thing that we can be sure of is that he would have come to table. He would have come to the feast with his brothers and sisters. And so as he did, we now prepare to fellowship at this sacramental table. Before we do that, we stand as we offer one another a sign of peace. And so may the God of peace sanctify you. May he strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before him at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all the saints. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please, will you offer one another a sign of peace? Peace be with you, peace with you. So our communion and our offertory hymn bids us come to the upper room which the Lord in the days of his flesh prepared for his disciples. An upper room did our Lord prepare for those he loved until the end. Amen. 
groom did our Lord prepare for those he loved until the end, and his disciples still gather there to celebrate their risen. Eternal God, we give you thanks for the triumph of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the life of your servant, St. Bartholomew. Accept this sacrifice of thanks and praise, and give us grace so to run our course with faith, that we too may come with all your saints to that eternal banquet in heaven, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And we rejoice in the glorious splendor of your majesty, for you have given us all a share with St. Bartholomew in the inheritance of the saints in light. In the darkness of this passing age, they proclaimed the glory of your kingdom. Chosen as lights in the world, they surround our steps as we journey on towards the city of eternal light, where they sing the everlasting song of triumph. And so in communion with angels and archangels and with all who have served you on earth and worship you now in heaven, we too raise our voices to proclaim your glory evermore praising you and singing. Oh, 
Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat this. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave you thanks, and then gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is shed for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we now remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Accept through him our great high priest. This our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. To you be glory and praise forever, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you on earth and in heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And together we pray the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ. 
Christ, preserve and keep thy body and soul.
Lord God, source of truth and love, will you keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, that we may remain united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Together we pray, faithful God, who called St. Bartholomew to serve you and gave him joy in walking the path of holiness. By this Eucharist, in which you renew within us the vision of your glory, strengthen us all to follow the way of perfection until we come to see you face to face through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So before we bring our service to a close, I'm sure Brenda has things she'd like us to be aware of. I'll stand a bit close. Oh, there we go. I think I'm getting through now. Um, there's just um, yesterday we had the dog show in the churchyard, and it was absolutely wonderful again. We had such fun, and the sun shone, so it couldn't have been a nicer day. It was lovely, and no dog fights. They were all really <laughs> well behaved. And altogether, um, we've made about £150. So thank you to everybody who helped. And thank you to the dogs of Lost Withiel. Well done oh. all. <laughs> um, you might have noticed uh, around the church, there is uh, an exhibition of the, um, the Siege of Lost Withiel, um, 380th anniversary uh, from 1644. Um, do take time to have a look at the boards on either side. Jill Parsons has worked very hard to get those set up. And the town band is giving a commemorative concert at 7 o'clock this Saturday. And I think that's going to be really good. So please come along and enjoy yourselves. Seven o'clock on Saturday. Thank you. Is there anybody owning up to a birthday? Seems not, Paul. <laughs> Thank you. Just one or two things from me to remind you. Um, Church wardens and PCC officers may very well have already had an email from the Archdeacon. Um, on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock in the Sone Room in Baconic, there is a pre-vacancy meeting. What happens when a parish goes into transition um, or a vacancy, interregnum as once was, um, then someone from the diocese, in this case it will be Rebecca Evans, some of you know Rebecca, from other things that she does for the diocese. Rebecca Evans and the Archdeacon uh, of Bodmin will be with the benefice, with church wardens and PCCs in the stone room at seven o'clock, talking about what happens next. Uh, Linda and I will be with you. There's been a bit of a delay due to that seagull that I spoke about. Um, and so we will be with you throughout September um, at least up until the last Sunday in September. Some, so, September 22nd uh, will actually be my last service. So you can put the flags up when you get a little bit nearer there. But until then, I said, we're lingering around like a bad odor at the minute, um, neither here nor there. Um, and then we will move out of Los my licensing service, to which you are all cordially welcome, in Padstow will be on the 1st of October. Um, and then we will officially move out of the rectory on the 9th of October, that uh, 9th and 10th. So that's barring any more seagulls or any more bats or any such thing like that. So I do apologize that people's plans have all been messed about. But until then, things will continue uh, very much as they have been. And thank you once again for being with us this morning. Um, that was that. 
just to say that next Saturday, the 31st of August, you are all warmly invited to Braddock's Vintage Tea Party. Uh, come along for a vintage experience. Lots of cakes, lots of um, music. So that will be, uh, if you can make that, that would be wonderful. So, without further ado, we bring our morning worship to a close with our final hymn, 209. And it may feel, at times, that we all experience the changing scenes of life. We lament the fact, sometimes, that things never stay the same. Um, I'm very conscious that, at least in one version of this, there is an additional verse uh, that we don't have the words to, so I'm not quite sure what's going to happen um, with this hymn. So I'll just put you on high alert. Um, through all the changing scenes of life in trouble, and enjoy. God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and love and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit rest and remain and be among you today and evermore Amen. go then in the peace of Christ thanks be to God <laughs>